live life without regrets? Or should we embrace our regrets? That's what we'll talk about today. I've made decisions that I regret. And I took them as learning experiences. I'm human, not perfect. Like anybody else. Queen Latifah. The other day I was listening to a podcast and it was talking about how men and women think of things differently in the past. And it was part of the whole conversation about how men think about the Romans. You know, I think of the Romans a lot too. But here's the thing is that women, they said, mostly think of the friendships they lost in the past, either because they left the area they lived in or the friendship broke up. So today we're going to talk about the book, The Power of Regrets, How Looking Backward Moves Us Forward by Daniel H. Pink. Daniel Pink is always compelling. Whether you hear him on other podcasts or you read his books, he's always someone who thinks about things, not so much in this way of theory and how it should work and the why it should work, but how things actually work and what can actually move us forward in real life instead of, like I said, being sort of lofty and up in the air. Really liked reading this book and I appreciated the way he wrote things because it was important as a reader, a normal human being, to read the words that he said. He says that a lot of people have this theory of no regrets. And you've seen it, I think, on T-shirts. I think it was a brand of a certain commercial. And and I've always struggled with that thought. Shouldn't we have regrets? Shouldn't we think about the things that we've done and maybe the things that didn't go well? Not that we should beat ourselves up or get depressed about the things we did. But in fact, isn't regret about learning from our experiences, but that's what we're going to find out today. He says that it became a movement, you know, to have no regrets and that it's a blueprint, he says, for life, that we just go past it. We just move on. We just live our lives and live our best lives. And I'm always a little bit curious about it. When I was looking at quotes for the beginning of the podcast, someone said, well, I don't have regrets. We all make mistakes. I don't know that that's exactly what regret is about. Regret is not driving ourselves into a hole because we made a bad decision. And maybe if you're thinking of it like that, you're not taking the lessons of what you did seriously enough. And so he said that in the end, it can lift us up, that we can have a positive experience about it. And he recognizes the fact that optimism and all the positive emotions that we have are important. They're important to our well being. They're important to how we look at the world. But he says that after 70 years of research into regret, there's two conclusions. Quote, regret makes us human and regret makes us better. I always have that interesting debate about what makes humans humans. You know, people say, oh, the opposable thumb, the ability to think about the future. But it is true that you don't see animals have regret in a big way. Do they learn about their life lessons? Do they think, well, you know, I chased the squirrel left and I should have chased the squirrel right? I think he's right. I think this is one of those things that makes us very human. He started a project that he called the worldregretsurvey.com, where people would go in and say what their regrets are. And you can read some of them. I kind of poured through quite a few of them. And it was interesting to see what people really regret. He went through and actually analyzed them, categorized them all those pieces. The survey is very quick if you want to take it. It's basically, here's my regret, here's where I live, and here's some basic uh, demographic information about me so that it can categorize it. But he said that he found that regrets fall in basically four different categories. Foundation regret, boldness regret, moral regret, and connection regret. And then we'll talk about what it means to have these categories of regrets. And then On the next episode, we'll talk about what we can do about regrets so that it's a more positive influence in our lives. It was interesting, like I said, reading some of the regrets people had. Some of them had to do with marriage and cheating or not being as good of a husband or as good of a wife or as good of a parent as they hoped they would be. I started thinking about my own. I wish I would have lost weight when I was 20 and it's easier to do. It's harder now. And so I do regret that. But I think that my regrets are a little bit different because I think of them more as a regret of knowledge. Right now, I understand 
how to do things in life, that I can do these things. I have to pick well. I have to pick the things I'm good at doing and go for those things. But I don't think I really understood that as a kid. And I certainly didn't understand that as a teenager or even in college. It felt more like I was on this track of high school, college, job. And I didn't realize how much power I have to alter what it is I was going to do in my life. And I think, I don't know if that's a regret, but I wish I knew what I know now then, because I think I would have tried harder. I would have done things a little bit differently to get the things I really wanted. It's hard, I think, when you think of it like that, because possibly I needed the lessons from my 20s or from my 30s to get where I'm at now. And maybe if I had tried these things earlier, I wouldn't have been equipped like I am equipped right now to do those things. I had to progress. He says that it's really this ability, what he calls to time travel and try to sit there and think about what we could have done in the past and if we would have done things differently, how it would have come out differently. I think that it's good to learn lessons, but you know what? Time travel is not possible. I could have said, if I knew now about doing certain things, way back when I was in high school, way back when I was in college, it might not have come out the same way. You can't make those guesses. We don't have the ability to accurately time travel. And so instead of being sad or depressed or all these regrets building on us and and beating us down, can we actually instead come out with a positive attitude? Instead of trying to imagine this comparison of our lives, instead, can we go forward and move forward? It's a little bit like this podcast is the opposite of the future you podcast. I did a couple of episodes on you don't know what your future you looks like. You know what? You don't really know what your past you looks like either. The decisions you made at the time were the best you could have done because of the data that you had in front of you. And again, maybe you weren't equipped at that time to do the thing or Maybe the circumstance wasn't the same. Again, I could have come up and become a blog writer way back in my 20s. It wasn't my strength, but podcasting is. But there was no such thing as podcasting in my 20s. So I couldn't have done it anyway. No sense of having regret. There was an interesting study, and I have read this before, where if you look at people who are in the Olympics, and there's the gold winner, the silver winner, and then the bronze winner. The one that is always the most unhappy is the silver winner, the one who comes in number two. And why is that? Because they were almost gold. They almost took the whole thing, but two seconds too slow. This one mistake here, this other mistake over there, and they missed gold and now they're silver. And the bronze person realizes how fortunate they were because they were just a few seconds few decisions here and there from falling out of the top three entirely and not getting a medal. That interesting. Number two is always the one who feels the worst. And there's a lot of psychology when it comes to regret like that, where you think that certain people will feel a lot of pain and suffering. It might not be what you think it is. But he says that the first step is that whenever we're talking about psychology, and this is one of my favorite phrases, that when you find yourself digging a hole, stop digging. If you're getting yourself into a financially bad situation, if you're getting yourself in a relationship bad decision, if your marriage is spinning out of control and you're not doing something to make it better, stop digging and start retracting some of the things that you're doing so that you can get out of the hole sooner. Just like putting on weight. Sit there and you put on weight and you put on weight and you put on weight. Okay. Before you can start losing weight, at least stop putting on weight and get some stability there and then go towards losing weight. Stop digging holes wherever you find your holes are being dug. Regret has some benefits is that the first ones is it can help prove our future decisions. So if you know in the past you used to do this and now you don't do this, it can help you make a bigger decision. I used to be addicted to video games. I loved playing games. And when the pandemic came along, what was the first thing I thought? Ooh, I should buy a really good game. And what was the second thought I had? No, the last time you did that, you just got stuck playing the game. You do not want to spend 
X many months just buried in your house playing video games. It's not going to be healthy for you. Decision two was the right decision. I started a podcast. So it helps us inform not just how the world works when we make a decision and maybe it didn't go very well, but it informs how we work and how things went and didn't go as well as we thought we did. He said, too, that regret can boost performance. And that just means that when we're trying to do something, we're trying to win at something or succeed in a project, that we want to improve the decisions that we're making. And by knowing, again, the lessons we learn from decisions or actions we took in the past, we'll do better in the performance of the future too. So not just the decisions, but how well we act on them. So if you decide that you're going to get a new job, you tried a couple of years ago, and your resume, maybe your resume wasn't very good. Now you know the things that you tried, you didn't try. So even though you didn't get whatever last job you were trying to get, getting your next job will be improved because you knew what didn't go so well and how you can make it a lot better. And then he says, regret deepens meaning. And I thought this was very interesting because it gives us experiences and somehow when things don't go well, sometimes it becomes a big story of your life. I mean, half the podcast, I'm telling you stories of things that didn't go very well in my life. And you can tell It had impacts on me. I thought about it for a long time. It held me down at some points in my life. And so really, it is adding to me in a lot of ways. These regrets I have, the things that didn't go very well, it can make your life richer. It can give you that contrast. I remember we see that in books, right? The first act of a play sets up a situation. The second act, something goes horribly wrong. And then the third act, we succeed, we triumph, we go go over the things that didn't go so well, and we win this this time around. That's how life is too. Our lives are richer because of the times we felt belittled, we didn't do as well as we thought we were going to do. And he says that these are what he calls if-only moments. If only I had done this, or if only I had done that. Well, easy now to see that, but you couldn't see the future at the time. So you can see that you shouldn't be mean to yourself about those if only moments, but you also can't overcome it. You can't say, oh, well, no regrets because you're stashing, he says, your negative emotions and eventually they're going to come back and haunt you. If people have a lot of buried bad emotions in their lives, I mean, that's why people go to counseling to try to dig those up. So neither... Are we trying to bury bad emotions, nor are we trying to dwell on bad emotions, but instead making them part of our story, part of who we are and how we got here? He says, too, that there's three views when it comes to our feelings. Should we feel our feelings and just lay it out there? You've met people or they don't hide their feelings very well. Or there are other people who don't feel their feelings. They bury them. You know, they are thinking people, they try to get rid of emotion, they try to avoid him when you can. But then he said that the third way is that you could decide feeling is something that you're going to do so that you can think better, that you can understand the emotion, understand how you got there. He says, quote, use them as a catalyst for future behavior. If thinking is for doing, feelings can help us think. And so then the idea is now we have our head in the game, thinking about our problems. We have our heart in the game, understanding the emotions of things. I tend towards enjoying the stoic philosophy, but I also know that, you know, to weather through things and have grit, but you're an emotional being. Humans are emotional. And so if we don't show our emotions, we can have despair. He says that if we ignore our feelings entirely, we can be delusional because we think we're going in the right direction and we're not. But if we use our feeling for thinking better, we'll make better decisions and we'll know what to do next whenever the next thing comes along. And he reviews some of his data when it comes to regrets. That back in 2011, people regretted romance family, education, I imagine that means either getting a college education or not getting a college education, career. Those were kind of the four big hitters. In 2021, it was family, you know, maybe the relationships in the family. 
partners, relationship with partners, maybe having one or not having one or breaking up with one, education and careers. Okay, so it follows a little bit of the same pattern. And even while it's a little bit different in percentages, it still follows in the same way that we have kind of the same lumped up regrets that we always do. He breaks regrets into four different categories. We mentioned that at the beginning of the podcast. Foundation regrets. And those are just your common regrets where we didn't work out or we didn't try really hard in school or we got a job we didn't like. And those are our main failures or our main types of regrets we have. We have some regret when it comes to our basic life, our physical, he says, well-being, those kinds of things. And he says in the end, another great quote, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. I thought that with my retirement. I screwed up my retirement. But you know what? I worked really hard and I caught up. I caught up 20 years of bad decisions when it came to retirement savings because I became very dedicated to it. So it's still possible. He says that foundation has an attribution error. Attribution error means that you attribute something to being potentially wrong, you know, so that if you say, oh, that rich person over there, they're just lucky. I'm just really unlucky. That's an attribution error. Or that person cut me off. They're a horrible jerk. You know, I remember one time I saw this guy and he was weaving all over the road and I was cranking. I'm like, what is this jerk doing? And then I saw that his dog was kind of out of control and he was trying to calm the dog down while he was driving. And then I had a problem with my cat and I was driving my cat to the vet in a not good situation. And I was upset and I wasn't driving very well. And I thought about that guy with the dog. We always attribute other people to being jerks. And then we recognize that we have reasons and other people don't. We don't know if someone's lucky and we don't know that that other person's a jerk. We're just sort of attributing a decision that we think. He says then there's a boldness regret. Those are risks or opportunities we didn't take. I should have married that person. I should have taken that other job. I should have gone to graduate school. So we didn't act in a way that would have progressed our lives. So it's called a boldness regret. And he says the phrase of it is, if only I had you know, taken that risk. And he says in the end that we don't have to play life safely. He says, quote, the lesson is plain. Speak up, ask him out, take that trip, start that business, and step off the train. I mean, like when the train is stopped. I think the step off the train is from that movie with uh, Ethan Hawke where he gets off the train to be with the girl. Then there's the moral regret. If you only had acted in the right way. So it wasn't whether you acted or didn't act. Maybe you cheated on a spouse. Maybe you didn't treat your children very well. Maybe you were unfair to other people, disloyal. Maybe you didn't speak up for people who didn't have power or you did speak up for the wrong person, whatever it is. And then there's also the moral decisions that come up with the big things about marriage or decisions we make or stances we take. So the moral decisions can be all over the place. And then he says that there are five regretted sins, you, that you caused harm to someone else, you cheated on someone else. Again, you were disloyal, you subverted a situation, which means you dishonored someone, you disrespected a teacher or something like that. And then there's desecration. When you basically wrecked or destroyed something that maybe you felt like you should not have, then that could have been darn near anything. But those are really intense emotions about it. And then he says the last one is connection regrets. And that can be anything from friends to family to children to parents. And he said that regret is if you only had that chance to talk to that person, be with them again. And he said that sometimes it's because we have fights with people, we just drifted away, or you know, maybe our lives changed. We had to move away from that town because we got married or we got a new job, and I just wish I could be with that person again, whether they're a friend or a family member or a spouse or a potential spouse. And so those are the other regrets. And that's what made me think about that podcast that we're talking about, where women oftentimes, he says, in this podcast, will regret the relationships they used to have, the friendships, the people they had that they could talk to that's no longer in their lives. That was the number one regret of most women, which was really interesting, relationships. 
And then he mentions, too, that men had a lot of regrets when it came to careers, choices about their lives, whether they got education, not education, and then the careers they picked and maybe they could have been doing better or something like that. I notice a lot of times that the men I knew and were friends with weren't that big on careers, didn't really care that much. And as soon as they got married, started having a family, then they had some regrets about wishing that they had taken other paths because they could have provided for their family more, something like that. And the very last point in this podcast we'll talk about, and then we'll continue on next time, were regrets of inaction. So basically, there's two types of regrets you have. You have regrets of inaction, things you didn't do that you should have done, or regrets of actions, things you did and you wish you hadn't done. It's interesting because at the age of 20, both types of regrets are an equal 50%. You get older, the regrets over the actions you did take and maybe you shouldn't have, drops away. I think it's because of how we think of things. We don't necessarily think, oh, well, I took that amazing vacation to Cancun, but boy, it cost me so much money, I ended up greatly in debt and I had to declare bankruptcy. Ooh, there's a bad regret. We eventually, as we get older, probably forget those types of regrets more because then we think, oh man, but I had so much fun in Cancun. The regrets of the actions we didn't take, the person we didn't marry, the job we didn't take, the move across country we didn't get, those start to resonate more. And I think it just has more to do with how we have our memories than maybe the actual side effects of what we've done. But interesting, really interesting. So my challenge to you is think about how you treat regrets. When you do something and you realize it was the wrong choice or you didn't take the choice you should have taken, Does it affect you? Does it hit you hard? Or are you the kind of person who tries to learn from that? And if you have some regrets that are hitting you kind of hard, try to categorize them a little bit. Was it a decision that you didn't make and should have been more bold? Was it a friendship that you lost? Or was it a moral regret that you wish you hadn't made that choice that you made? Or is it just a plain and simple one? I wish I would have saved more for my retirement. Something fundamental or foundational, he says, to your life. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember, I have another podcast, which is Small Steps with God. It's the same kind of deal. Talk about these issues. They are religious books as compared to the books we talk about. But the podcast is essentially the same. And I think if you like this podcast, you probably like that one too. Sometimes the ideas cross over. We've talked about life on social media, how to deal with struggles and problems. And I even just recently did one on public speaking from a pastor who says, don't drop the mic. So if you want, you can find more information about it at smallstepswithgod.com. And remember, our path towards overcoming the biggest regrets in our lives starts with small steps. 